Hey guys, it's Bully and welcome back to the studio. Firstly, I would like to say hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you very much for taking the time and the energy to subscribe. Um, if you see anything you like, uh, share it with your friends. I'm trying to grow my, subscri uh, my subscriber listings. <coughs> Excuse me, a bit of a cold. Um, and I really appreciate people who take the time to comment. I'll always reply. Uh, sorry it's been such a long time since the last video. Um, I have been super busy in the real world changing jobs and stuff. But the Christmas holiday period has allowed me some time to get into the studio and um, do some work on uh, some commission stuff for people. Um, and uh, also start to sort of bang on a few more of the competition pieces for me. Again. Um, but really what I wanted to do in this period of time is I've had a box of um, House Escher sitting around in the studio for ages and I love Necromunda it's the only game of all the ranges I actually have ever played um, and I wanted a Necromunda gang but I like most people probably I love the models let me get don't get me wrong the digital sculpting on the Escher is is really lovely um, but I don't like the the repetition um, of the models so you get two sprues of five models and the kits are identical on the sprues and then you can make them up slightly different ways but what that basically means is you have um, duplicate poses on all of them and quite often you can have duplicate kind of hairdos or faces or whatever else um, and anybody who's been a long time watcher will know that I am a great tinkerer with miniatures and I particularly love having unique miniatures and I never want any of my miniatures to look like they do on the box um, because then I have a miniature that somebody else has and I don't want that so uh, last yesterday all day and late into last night I spent my day tinkering with the Escher kit had a lot of fun um, the reason I'm showing you today is I had to do a lot of sculpting last night on all the extensive conversions so therefore I needed time for the green stuff to dry before I could show you so here is uh, a very heavily converted um, house Escher gang and no two miniatures are the same no hairdo is the same no face is the same um, and they're extensively converted and repositioned using the majority of the Escher kit uh, and a couple of bits from external kits which I'll point out as I go along um, but what I noticed is every time I do this and I kit bash all my models up especially with my Red Indian Crute and stuff everybody then asks how I did it and I've already painted them by that point and that makes it a bit difficult my personal opinion is the art of a great conversion is for it to be invisible um, so I thought it was a better idea for me to show you these one at a time now and talk you through them um, and then potentially explain how I actually did them so that uh, I've answered that question before people inevitably answer. Uh, so I'm going to clear away the majority of these and kind of bring them in one at a time and hopefully I can get the camera to focus a bit better than it is. Uh, okay. Oh, that's good. Right, so here we have the uh, the standard Escher leader, the gang leader from the kit. I've literally done nothing to this miniature at all, apart from switching the sword out from uh, one of the skeleton kits from... Um, oh, I can't remember what, they're called, what the game's called. Basically, I had a... Hang on a second. Here's one I'm working on for a commission. Um, I had a spare one of these blades... Well, not spare, it was on a sprue, but I decided to chop it up for my Escher. And obviously you can't put a power sword that's all chunky and stuff on these little feminine killers. So I switched the blade out, swapped the whip for a power blade, but much prefer it, much more elegant. Uh, and I think, you know, she was a very simple conversion, but she looks good. I always drill and pin with brass pins their feet on all my models so I can then position them and paint them. Um, and I use crocodile clips when I'm painting, and the pin just holds in. Okay, so that's the very straightforward leader conversion. Very easy one for you to copy. Done. Let's go for uh, the... Oh, sorry, on the back of the leader, I just filled in where there was a large gap and re-sculpted the cloak, or the cape, sorry. The... Um, let's just get it to focus. Okay, the uh, heavy was a very straightforward one again. Um, I removed the gas coming out the end of the whatever it is because that really looked shite uh, and then I drilled the barrels. I always drill all of my barrels so I'm a bit of a stickler for that. But this is a standard kit and a standard build in every way. So that's the only standard miniature in the range. Okay, uh, next one. 
next up. Just doesn't want to focus quite so well on this one. Let's try and bring some light in more. How's that? It's better. Okay, so this is the uh, standard leg setup that comes in the kit for the one of the running girls. Um, and what I have done is uh, changed the arm position. So both these large pistols barrels are drilled, obviously. There we go. Um, so I put uh, brass pins into the arms uh, and I just repositioned them and then use, you can see the shininess there, then I use GW plastic glue to just melt the plastic and refuse the plastic together again to make it seamless. So this is a simple one, um, just a couple of drills, a couple of pins and some shaving of the inner armpits and stuff, but that's a nice kind of dynamic pose. I like them to have a lot of life. Uh, then we have, I'll show you the standard leg legs first. So then we have the other standard pair of legs like that um, and in this it's a, a completely standard kit again apart from the fact I've repositioned this shoulder and I have uh, added a shoulder pad onto this arm nice and straightforward really lovely miniature that one is I love the hair in particular okay uh, Actually, I lied. That's a totally standard one. There's no conversion on that one at all. It's just nicely posed. So there you go. That's straightforward and easy. Right. Now we start to get into the <coughs> slightly more ambitious ones. Actually, no. Let's do this one first. So this is a straightforward um, pose. And all I've done is sawn off the shotgun. Uh, and, you know, drilled the barrels out and stuff. And then I changed the hair slightly by shaving off one of the fins which I used then on a, on another model, but she's pretty standard actually. Okay, so there's the first kind of five, six of the the standard ones, and then what I did is, is chop the others up to buggery. So the first thing I did is on those two, uh, hang on, there we go, yeah. On the two that come as standard with the running legs, these ones, I basically uh, chopped off and so I swapped the right legs. So I left the left legs with the bent knee and then I swapped the right legs over completely on these models. Um, let's get the other one out of the way so you can actually see. Okay, so on this one you can see that, I mean that's first off that's the right leg, left leg of the model, no wait, yeah left leg of the model, right leg as you look at it, from the other uh, the other miniature with its uh, power pack and its lantern still attached uh, and then what I did is I, I obviously positioned it with a pin as if she's uh, leaping to the side and then I sculpted back in the extension, filled in the trouser leg and the tabard. Um, the arm on this one is uh, again completely repositioned um, to give it a much more dynamic pose and as you can see there I've sculpted in the muscle and everything so it's all nice and smooth. I appreciate it looks shiny and a bit gluey in some of these things. It is, but when it's painted, you won't see any of that. Um, and then the blade hand, I really wanted it to be as if she was leaping to drive a blade into somebody. Um, so I've, uh, again, completely repositioned the blade hand and rebuilt the, the arm and the shoulder, making sure to have the armpit in there. And then I took a piece of hair off one of these spare heads to avoid duplication, stuck it on her head and then just sculpt it in there so she's she's really nice she's really quite a dynamic pose okay uh, then we have um, the other one of those uh, leg swap overs and in, instead of this one being running again like the other one was I was able to reposition it so that she is walking um, and I did that by swapping the leg. I add, I then built the leg up where it had been pinned, um, and I added the power pack from the kit with the lantern onto the leg to disguise the vast majority of the rebuild. And then I sculpted in and blended in 
the the top end of the leggings and the boots um, and she's a straightforward one now that was actually quite a lot more complicated than it looks but actually it's quite quite seamless now so that's nice I'm quite pleased with that one uh, and then we get the other one um, which was obviously a duplication um, so in this one I think that is how we find it um, which one is this one I think is it that one no. bear with me bear with me hang on that's the one with the tabard just trying to find it It is that one. Okay, so you can see just how dramatically I've changed this one. It's exactly the same model, but what I did is instead of gluing this leg on as it was in the kit with the, the rear section, I shaved it down um, and I repositioned it so it's walking straight. Um, so there you go, that's the best comparison you can see. Hang on one second. Interrupted by my daughter there, who always comes whenever I'm recording, literally always, bless her. Um, okay, so uh, you can see there, I've just you can see how I've repositioned the leg, chopped and moved it, and then I've sculpted in the back of the calf and filled in the gaps and the under section under the knee um, just to change the pose. And then with this one, I, re I really wanted quite a badass sniper. And if you don't buy the Forge World weapons upgrade kits, the sniper rifle that comes in that comes in with it's a bit poo, I think. Um, so I took the sniper rifle shoulder sort of pose, and then I drilled it out. I placed a piece of steel barrel with a little grommety thing I found on one end, and then I put an auto gun muzzle tip on the end of it instead of a las tip because um, there's no power pack on it so it's not a LAS, it's an auto gun it had a LAS power tip on it which is odd um, and I've extended the barrel obviously quite a lot which makes her look quite badass and then here what I've done is very straightforward I've used one of the existing arms for the carrying weapon and I've sliced off the wrist of a sword blade uh, from another model and I've spliced the two together to give her a kind of jaunty dynamic pose um, she's, looking, uh, she's looking very cool, love her um, and then the most ambitious one for me was what I could do with the with the leader because obviously the the leader and the heavies poses are the most fixed and I wanted to do something a bit different. So this is, is that the heavy or the leader? Uh, so this is the heavies legs um, and torso reused again. Uh, so what I've done is uh, the first thing I did is I added the, I chopped away the, the arm here to be able to reposition it. Uh, and I uh, spliced off the back of one of the weapons, one of the pistols, I think, leaving the pistol grip and the trigger finger. Then I took uh, one of the combi melter parts from the Blood Angels Death Company kits, or the Vanguard kit, I can't remember which one it was, uh, and I spliced that onto it, uh, and then I rebuilt the rear of the weapon to give her a kind of short-barreled, limited-shot multi-melter. Um, like a cut down one and then I the pistol arm is just one of the auto gun pistols which I really loved okay and then I added the uh, the ponytail to the side of her head from one of the other models and then I started the really ambitious stuff so I took the jacket um, that was left over and I mounted the jacket in the best place I possibly could but obviously the jacket's not for the heavy the jacket's for the leader so what I then did is re-sculpt in the sleeve uh, where it joined the back so it's kind of seamless and it's as if she's actually got the police jacket on like the leader has. Uh, and then I had a real problem with the cuff because the other sleeve obviously doesn't hang right and the rear of the leader's kit becomes the other sleeve. So I cut the, the, the bottom of the sleeve off, super glued that on and then I rebuilt the upper sleeve uh, and the wrap around from scratch with green stuff. Uh, and then re-sculpted in the top of the shoulder pad to make it seamless. So she's also wearing a, a jacket like the leader. 
um, but you can see here just how um, kind of extensively the jacket's been altered. Uh, I kind of shaved off the studs and stuff because I didn't want the two jackets to look the same. Um, and she looks almost a bit Goliathy, really, uh, as an Escher, but she's pretty badass, this one. So there we go. There are the um, entire custom Escher glam, um, gang. I will probably get one more sprue of five. Uh, and do another five, maybe with some Forge World uh, weapons. I kind of want a 15 gang. Um, or I might get some of the Forge World kind of bounty hunters or even convert up some of the assassins or something like that to, uh, you know, because the assassins make quite good Escher, I think, and they're really nicely dynamically posed, you know, simple head swap and stuff. Maybe adding a bit of Escher spiky armor would be quite an easy kit to them. I'd be interested to know which one um, your favourite is in terms of the posing and how they're done. And stay tuned, this is part one. What I will do is follow the process as I paint up this gang. Um, and I'm going to paint this gang up uh, for the next uh, kind of Golden Demon thing. So I never, when I do my competition pieces, I never do purely Games Workshop only stuff when I'm building stuff. And this time I've been very careful to make sure that I not only use just purely Games Workshop parts, but I'm also going to base them purely on Games Workshop um, Necromunda bases. So for once in my life I can actually enter Golden Demon. Um, so I'll be working on these over the coming few weeks just to get these guys, these ladies up and done. Any suggestions for gang names, uh, let me know. Um, and I look forward to your comments. Thanks very much guys. Have a, a lovely afternoon.